know the rules. Welcome to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, your one-stop shop for all things West Indies cricket, by the fans, for the fans. Listen to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast. Indeed, you are people who listen to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, and welcome back for a quick, I really mean it this time, a quick episode, a quick edition of the Caribbean Cricket Podcast. I'm one half of the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, Michelle St. Patrick Hewitt, and thank you for tuning in as ever. If you're new to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast and you're watching this, you can see on the ticker tape below, find us at Carib Cricket on Twitter and Instagram. Like, share, subscribe to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast YouTube channel. We're on that road to 5K. And of course, if you want to become a patron of the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, head to www.patreon.com forward slash Carib Cricket. But most importantly of all, just share the channel with those you know who would be interested. As the video to this particular, sorry, as the title to this particular video indicates, I wanted to talk briefly about Darren Sammy. And I wanted to talk about his appointment as the the West Indies white ball coach for both obviously the LDI side and the T20 side. And the thing is, we did a live show about two weeks back covering kind of Sammy's appointment and Andre Coley's appointment as a Red Bull coach and the announced squads for the World Cup qualifiers, etc. But since Sammy's appointment, probably predictably, there there has started to be a bit of a backlash in some quarters uh, to Sammy's appointment as as the white ball head coach. And I think I just, I, it's not that I've taken exception to it. I don't think it's even as deep as that, but I just wanted to address it because I think I, I, I've read too much over the last few days where people, I think, have already started the cuss out against Sammy before he's even coached one game. He's not even had a chance to coach one Degger Degger game and people are already coming for his neck saying this, that and the other. How can he be head coach? What does he know? So on and so forth. And this will this will all be water, water for ducks back for Darren Sammy. You don't you can't be Darren Sammy and have the career he had facing the criticism he faced as a player and not get to the head coach position of, of the West Indies cricket team and not know that people are going to come for your neck and uh, fling mud at you this way and that way and say you're not good enough and so on and so forth. So for Sammy, I don't think it's even all that important. He he knows he, he knows what's going to come with the territory. But before I start and I kind of get into it, I, I wanted to read this out first because it's some. if you follow us on Twitter, uh, you certainly know about this. Um, if you have listened to enough shows where I've kind of fronted them, you certainly know about this because it's something I, you know me by now. I'm a stats guy. I'm a facts guy. Um, I only come on these shows to try and talk about real statistical analysis. And for me, it's about if there's no reality to, 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 to what I'm talking about, there's no point in talking, right? These are all the West Indies head coaches since the year 2000. Okay, I've said it before, but listen up carefully and get your ped, uh, get your pen and your pad if you need to, to 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 understand. Roger Harper between 2000 and 2003 had a win percentage of 39 percent. Gus Logie between 2003 and 2004 had a win percentage of 37 percent. Bennett King from overseas, Australian, between 2004 and 2007, a win percentage of 30 percent. John Dyson from overseas, Australian, between 2007 and 2009, a win percentage of 29%. Otis Gibson, 2010 to 2014, a win percentage of 38%. Phil Simmons, 2015 to 2016, a win percentage of 32%. Stuart Law from overseas, Australian, between 2017 and 2018, a win percentage of 34%. Richard Pybus, overseas, South African, um, a win percentage of 36% 2019. And then Phil Simmons, obviously, he came back and lost his job last year. Um, between 2019 and 2022, a win percentage of 36%. I say all that, and you can probably hear in my voice that I've been under the weather. So if anybody's been wondering where, why there's not been as much content um, as, 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 as much content as usual, it's just because I've been a bit ill. 
But um, I, I give all those percentages and say all that to say this. No matter who West Indies appointed as their Red Bull head coach and white uh, for the men's side, Red Bull head coach and white ball head coach, respectively, the pattern of appointments over the last 23 years shows that we shouldn't be expecting miracles anyway. I just read out a list of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've had nine head coaches since the year 2000. And none of those head coaches have been able to pass a win percentage of 39%. The, 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 the win percentage range is between 29% and 39%. And that has been the case for the last 23 years. So no matter who West Indies, Cricket West Indies could have turned to, there would have been issues for me with regards to um, the, the, the win percentage and so on and so forth. Let me just pause there, people. I just realized I've not plugged in the charger. This is what you try and do when you press recording. You don't even check everything. I'm back. I'm live. I'm back. So no matter who they're appointed, I think we've got to be realistic and say there is no coach out there who can change the kind of script. Yeah. Because the infrastructure of West Indies cricket is still the infrastructure of West Indies cricket. We could have appointed, we could have appointed Brendan McCullum. Okay, we couldn't, but you get my drift. We could have gone for Ricky Ponting. We could have gone for this man. We could have gone for that man. But the infrastructure of West Indies cricket from the grassroots up to the senior side is still the same. So no matter who we go for or who we went for, that range between 29% and 39% isn't getting broken anytime soon. And the reason I, I kind of reiterate that and go back to these win percentages is because I've seen it in, across media and across and across fans forums. I've seen people saying, Darren Sammy's only got a level two coaching certificate. He's not good enough. Well, how, why have we appointed somebody with level two? He's not good enough. Well, these are the standards we've fallen to. How can Darren Sammy get the job? We don't need a man motivator. We need somebody with proper coaching credentials. That's all I'm hearing. And there may be some elements of truth in that. There may be some aspects of that that we've got to take at face value and say, well, yeah, you know what? In the Cricket West Indies job description, they did say they wanted somebody with level three head coach credentials, right? And Darren Sammy's only got level two. In the recent press conference, Sammy said he's working towards his level three. He started the process. Cool. So I get it. I get some of those. I get people who are coming out of those quarters saying, but he's not even got the credentials he's supposed to have. But my friend, we've had people with those credentials over the last 23 years, and it hasn't meant diddly squat. You could take the best head coach in the world today, whoever that might be, and it's still not going to really shift the needle any way significantly. And I'm not asking anybody to tell me, Mash, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm telling you facts. What has changed about our infrastructure across the different territories that means that we could get a level four head coach, bring them in, if we could even afford someone like that, and see fundamental change in our men's senior side? Make it make sense to me, because these are the said same people who will say to me, oh, we should be getting our best coaches in at the grassroots level, because that's where we need to make the difference. So if that's your belief, and if that's true, why would you think then that just bringing in the best coach possible with the best credentials possible, possible right at the top end of our game for the men's senior side is going to make a tangible difference to our trajectory? I just read nine head coaches out to you and the win percentage range went from 29% to 39%. What's worse, that 39% that I read out, which was Roger Harper, that came 20 years ago. So the, 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 the percentage high across that 23-year 20 th period was 23 years ago from Roger Harper. We've not, we've not passed, we've not surpassed that in the 20 years that have come since Roger Harper was stood down as head coach. So you can bring this guy, you can bring that guy, you can show me this paper, you can show me that coaching qualification, you can show me that coaching certificate. Where is the evidence from the last 20 plus years that shows that a top coach can make major change at the top end of West Indies cricket? 
all you can really ask for is 1% intangibles or mar sorry, not intangibles, 1% marginal gains. That's I, I, Realistically, that's all I think you can ask for from a head coach of the West Indies side, finding those hidden 1% marginal gains that might make the difference between us being a number nine ranked side and being a number six or seven ranked side. That's realistic. That's the only realistic thing I see. Anybody asking for anything else? Well, boy, I can't help you. So when I see the cuss out coming Sammy's way and people saying he's not qualified, he's not got the credentials, I'm not listening to all that. That don't make sense to me. That doesn't make sense. That would make sense to me if Sammy hadn't coached anybody yet. Like if we just plucked him out and said, well, boy, you know, you're our former two-time T20 World Cup winning captain. You must know something. It's you come have a go. I would get your argument if that's what Cricket West Indies was doing. But didn't Sammy coach St. Lucia Kings last year in CPL? They came third. Hasn't he been coaching Zalmi in the PSL for, the I think, the last two years or two of the last three years? So it's not like Sammy hasn't done anything. In fact, when um, in the 2021 edition of, uh, of CPL, Sammy was, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below, Sammy was the assistant head coach to Andy Flower. So you lot, are, some of you lot are talking as if Sammy's just come out, come out, from, come out from his yard. He's got a phone call from Kish, Dr. Kishore Shallow. He's come out of his yard and said, "Well, boy, I'll, I'll try." Like man hasn't been doing anything in cricket. I think some of you must think, "Oh, you've only just heard him on commentary, so that's all Sammy's got. That's his only credentials." Come on, man. And more importantly, on top of that, so what? We can't give him at least a, a one dega dega game. We can't give him. 10 games, we can't give him 20 games, we can't give him 30 games before we start making grandiose um, kind of assessments of his ability. What People are just writing him off, just so, before he's even done anything. No matter who got this job at this point in time, they were always going to be faced with the supreme difficulty of their first assignment being a World Cup, qualifi World Cup qualifiers. No matter who got the job. There can be no serious West Indian fan who ahead of this coaching appointment would have said, say we'd got Ricky Ponting, would have said, well, boy, now we're definitely going to get out of the World Cup qualifiers and we're going to be one of the top two. There's no coach we could have appointed that could make any serious West Indies fan bolsey about what we're going to do in the World Cup qualifiers because our ODI, our, our, our 50 over cricket is so substandard that any coach who got the job has a difficult job ahead of him, Sammy or anybody else. So let's let the man have a goal before we come for his neck and say man's no good. How about that? But on top of that, what seems to have really caused the kind of ire and consternation from some quarters of the West Indies public and West Indies media is because of one comment that Sammy made in the, in the press conference earlier this week. Darren Sammy was asked by Brandon Corlett, journalist out of Guyana. Brandon Corlett said to him, and bear in mind, Darren Sammy is the white ball head coach, both T20 and ODI. So Brandon Corlett, journalist, said to Darren Sammy, has there been any discussions from your end with the likes of Evan Lewis and Shimron Hetmeyer? Sammy didn't volunteer the information. He was asked a question by a journalist. As the head coach of both white ball sides, Sammy replied to the question. He said, I've spoken to Evan Lewis. I've spoken to Shimron Hetmeyer. We, I'm, I'm reading off his, his comments here. We had some really good communication. It's all about communication. It was positive conversations. They play in our domestic tournaments. I'm hoping that we can include them at some point in the future or going forward. And I'll continue to have that dialogue. He then added, and that also extends for the likes of Sinul Narain and um, Andre Russell, we've had conversations. He must, by the way some of you reacted to that, you must have thought that Darren Sammy said he'd spoken to Satan himself. That by the way some of you reacted, we don't want them man back in West Indies cricket. They've never done nothing for West Indies cricket. Sammy, what are you doing? Uh, da, 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 da. I couldn't believe what I was reading in some quarters. Is he not the head coach? 
Did the T20 independent report after the debacle at the 2022 World Cup not say moving forward one of the short term objectives for cricket West Indies should be to sit down with some of the best with, with the best white ball players in the region and formulate a cohesive dialogue moving forward? Did we not just come out from the last year of West Indies cricket where Desmond Haynes said, well, boy, I asked Nicholas Puran to, 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 to ring Sunil Narayan, leaving it up to the captain to, to sort out dialogue. So isn't Sammy doing the right thing? As the head coach, is he not doing the right thing to say, let me start the dialogue with these people? Uh, he's had no say in selection yet. The squad that he's taken to the World Cup was picked for him by Roland Butcher and, Roland Butcher and Desmond Haynes. Sammy got the job after the squad had already been selected. Sammy won't have his first say in a squad to be selected until the India um, the India series, uh, uh, multi-format series coming up in July, etc. right? Is it not right, therefore, for Sammy as a head coach as one of his first priorities to open up dialogue with people who are perceived to be on the outside of West Indies cricket looking in? I might have said what I've said about Shimron Hetmeyer, but the one thing you, no one can ever say is that I've never said don't have conversations with the guy. Yes, he's disappointed me multiple times, but he is still a talented individual. The only way to get this guy back into the side of eventually is to open up and have honest dialogue and communication. And if anyone can do it, Sammy can. Because if people are going to say that the only skill set that Sammy's got, if, the, if some of the fools are going to say that the only skill set Sammy's got is uh, man motivating and all of that, then yes, is he not the best person to open up dialogue with some of these individuals and characters? And then let's unpick that a bit further. Would the West Indies white ball sides not be better with a fit and firing and mentally ready Evan Lewis and for that matter, Shimron Hetmeyer? I dare anybody listening to this to tell me that the West Indies white ball sides would not be better with a mentally, physically um, clocked in, if that's the right phrase to use, Evan Lewis and Shimron Hetmeyer. Get at me in the comments below. Get at me in the comments below and realistically try and come at me with an argument that says that West Indies wouldn't be a better side with those two in the side with their heads now switched on, working for a coach that they're actually listening to and respecting West Indies cricket and so on and so forth. If Sammy can achieve that, then good. Who are we to say that's a bad move? Where some people have a bigger issue is. Uh, Andre Russell and Sinil Narine. Andre Russell and Sinil Narine are 35 years old, respectively. For some of you, that seems to, seems to suggest that they should be written off. All I will say is this. In 2024, we have a home T20 World Cup. Name me. Get ready now, people. Oh, obviously, loads of you are going to come in the comments about but his action and this, that, this, that. Forget all that for now. Just dead all that talk for now. Name me a better slow bowler, spinner, Coulson on the Rhine, what you want to call him. Name me someone better than him in the region. If Darren Sammy can have dialogue with Sin on the Rhine and his agent or whatever it might be that gets in on the Rhine to play for West Indies in a home World Cup, name me somebody better than Sin on the Rhine. I don't, I don't come at me about, oh, but his age, this, that. I asked you a simple question. Name me someone better than Sunil Narain, if Sunil Narain can be re-engaged with to play in a home World Cup in 2024. Andre Russell is a different matter altogether. I no longer know if Andre Russell at the age of 35 is still the best option for West Indies going forward. Obviously, some of you are going to get vexed. You're going to be in the comments shouting about, Mash, how can you say this, this, that, and the other? I don't know if Andre Russell fits in that same category that I'm putting still on the rhyme. But what I will say is this. If a West Indies T20 side was to have a choice between Odin Smith, Romario Shepard and Andre Russell, which two of those three would you take? That's all. I'll just leave that there for now. But fundamentally, and get obviously get at me in the comments below, but fundamentally, if that's your reason, to badmind Darren Sammy 
and say he's no good. He's already started off on a bad footing. This guy shouldn't be head coach for the simple reason that he's got a level two qualification and he don't have level three. And he started positive conversations with Lewis Hetmeyer, Russell and the Ryan. If that's enough for you, as a West Indies cricket fan, to say we must write off Darren Sammy and we shouldn't even judge him based on what he actually does as West Indies head coach, then how much of a fan are you really? Because my thing is this. We've had head coaches in the past who I had no faith in. <laughs> Richard Pybus. We've had head coaches in the past who I didn't like. Richard Pybus. But I still gave him the chance. I still said, well, boy, man's head coach now. We have to rally round the side, said same way. So why, for some of you, is Darren Sammy beyond the pell? What's Darren Sammy done to you? What's he done to you? And why can't you give him a few, uh, some games, at least, before you start saying, boy, this, that, and the third, the man's no good, so on and so forth. Let's get one thing straight before I sign off. Being West Indies head coach is a poisoned chalice. It is a poisoned chalice. Being West Indies captain is a poisoned chalice. Because no matter who it be, no matter who you are, the one certainty you're guaranteed is the West Indies public will come for your neck. The only difference this time round is people are coming for Sammy's neck and he ain't even started in the job. And they're coming for him. So just answer a simple question for me, people. Which head coach out there do you genuinely believe could overturn a 23-year issue of poor win percentages? Which head coach do you believe has the Midas touch that can come in at the highest level of West Indies cricket with no fundamental real changes going on to the infrastructure underneath it, click his fingers and we suddenly just start winning enough. Who is that person? And if you can't give me anybody that guarantees you that 40% and above win percentage, why shouldn't Darren Sammy get his chance then? I'll be Mashal St. Patrick Hewitt, one half of the Caribbean Cricket Podcast. Maybe I've just been reacting to the usual kind of social media clickbait noise. Maybe it's me reacting to ignorant people on fans' forums and, and, and so on and so forth. Maybe I shouldn't have given it the time of day. But my thing has always been the same. Whoever is a coach of a West Indies cricket team, we still rally all the said same way. Get me, get me in the comments below. Like, share, subscribe. You know the drill. Follow the Caribbean Cricket Podcast. Head to www.caribbeancricketpodcast.com if in doubt. You can find everything there. But before you go, obviously, like, share, and subscribe. That's been another episode of the Caribbean Cricket Podcast. Thank you. Good night. We rule the cricket world. Now the rules. Welcome to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, your one-stop shop for all things West Indies cricket, by the fans, for the fans.